Welcome to another GNU Cash Quick Start tutorial. I'm Laura from the BusyBeePost.com and in this tutorial I will be focusing on the GNU Cash Accounts Payable feature. I will show you how to enter vendors, bills, and process payments. Setting up the GNU Cash Accounts Payable feature is not much different than setting up GNU Cash Accounts Receivables feature. I went over in my previous tutorial on creating invoices. The only difference is you will be working with bills instead of invoices. You should be familiar with how to set up a sales tax table and billing terms in GNU Cash. And if not, you can check out my video on creating invoices part one where I go into detail on how to set them up. Let's begin. The GNU Cash Accounts Payable feature keeps track of the amounts you owe to others, such as vendors you purchase products from with the intent to sell. Just like the Accounts Receivable account, you generally do not work directly with the Accounts Payable account, but instead you use the four integrated GNU Cash Accounts Payable application components. Accounts Payable is listed in the Chart of Accounts under Liabilities as shown here because it's money you owe. The four integrated Accounts Payable components that you will be working with are number one, vendors, people or companies from whom you purchase business related expenses on credit. Number two, bills or what you receive from a vendor for business related purchases on credit. Number three, jobs. Jobs are used to group multiple bills from a particular vendor. Since jobs is an optional feature, I'm not going to be focusing on jobs in this tutorial. I will be focusing on the basics of using the accounts payable feature. The fourth component of the accounts payable system is process payments which is used to register payments in the system you make to the vendor you owe payments to. To begin, step one, before you can enter any information about a vendor, you must first register the vendor's information in the accounts payable system. To register a vendor, select business from the menu bar. When the menu opens, select vendor and from the sub menu select new vendor. Here on the new vendor screen you can enter any number by which you would like to refer to this vendor. If you don't enter a number the system will automatically generate one for you. In the company name field enter the company or person from whom you purchase goods from. The company name field is a required field. You cannot leave it blank. Active, this is useful when you have many past vendors and you want to see only those marked active. Under payment address, here you can fill in any general information about the vendor you want. The only required field here is the address field. Everything else is optional. In the notes field, you can record any additional comments or contact information that you want to enter about this vendor. Next, select the payment information tab at the top. Here, currency specifies the payment currency by default. The system defaults to the currency you selected when you set up the business accounts. Terms specifies the payment term arrangements you have with the vendor. None is selected by default. If you set up the vendor's billing terms through the GNU Cash Billing Terms editor, you can click on the drop down arrow and select it here. Tax included. Sales tax charged by vendors is a tricky subject because if you're buying from legitimate wholesalers, Normally you don't have to pay taxes on the goods you purchase for your business for resale purposes. Even if you buy your craft supplies 
for products you make to sell through many of the popular retail stores such as Joann's, Michael's, or even Walmart. If you are a business purchasing products that are sales tax exempt, you normally will not have to pay taxes on the craft supply products you purchase. If you can show proof you have a sales tax license. Now another thing is that some businesses when they do pay taxes on resale products they purchase, they will roll up the taxes into the total cost of the goods instead of showing the taxes separately. This part here, tax included, will all depend on how you handle vendor sales tax. You should consult an accountant or whoever handles your bookkeeping to determine the best way to handle taxes you pay to vendors. If you click on the drop down arrow, here you see that you have a few options. Yes means that the sales price that you will enter on the vendor's bill already includes the taxes. No means the taxes are not included and in that case you need to select the vendor sales tax table that you previously registered in the systems by clicking on the check box and on the right hand side select the table. I don't have any table set up so I can't select a table. If you're unsure you can just leave the default use global. As long as you have a vendor sales tax table set up in the system you can still enter the sales tax when you enter the bill if you need to. When you are finished scroll down and click on OK to close out. In this next step, step two, you will enter the new bill you receive from the vendor. From the main menu, select business. And when the menu bar opens, select vendor. And from the sub menu, click on new bill. Here on the new bill window, across from type, Select bill if it is not already selected by default as indicated here. Bill ID is optional. You can enter the identification number which is the vendor's internal number as specified on your vendor's bill. Date opened is the date of the bill. By default the current date is displayed. To change it click on the drop down arrow to bring up the calendar and select the new date. Vendor is the vendor that you pre-registered in the system whom this bill you're entering is coming from. Begin by typing the first few letters of the company name in the field text box and GNU Cash will try to auto-complete it for you which normally works as you see here. If not, click on select to bring up the find tool and when the find vendor window opens on the left hand side click on the drop down arrow to select the criteria you want to use to search for the company. I will leave the default company name selected. Next in the search text box Enter the first few letters of the company name you are searching for and scroll down and select find. And when the company name you are searching for appears, highlight it by clicking on the name and then click on the select tab on the right hand side and the name will automatically be filled in for you. As you can see here, you will find that you will use the GNU Cash Find tool quite frequently. That's why I went through how to search, find, and select the vendor. Moving on, billing ID, this is where you can enter the vendor's ID for the bill, such as the vendor's invoice number. Terms, which I already talked about, is the payback terms agreement you have with this vendor. If you selected the vendor billing terms when you set up this vendor, then the terms would show up here.
pre-selected instead of none as shown. But you still have the option of selecting it now if you have not done so already. Simply click on the drop down arrow and when the option appears select the vendor billing terms you have pre-registered in the system. When you click on the OK tab the edit bill window opens. Here you see it's not much different than entering data in an invoice or entering data into a GNU Cash Basic Check Register. The only difference is you will be entering data from a vendor bill you received. The date of the bill is entered in a date field. If you need to change the date, click on the drop down arrow to bring up the calendar you can use to change the date. In the description field, enter what you purchased. In the action field, you can select a descriptive option that describes the item by clicking on the drop down arrow or you can enter your own information. I will enter case here since the product I purchased is sold by the case. In the expense field, I will select the expense account from the chart of accounts that the transaction applies to. I will select cost of goods sold. In the quantity field, enter how many you purchased. In the per unit price field, enter how much you paid per unit purchased. Now in the taxable field, here it wants to know is this amount taxable? In other words, were you charged tax? And if so, click in the field box until a check mark appears then move to the next tax table field and select the vendor tax table you set up in the system to calculate the taxes and apply it. But since I don't have a vendor sales tax table set up for the vendor sales taxes, I am unable to apply the taxes to the bill at this point, even if I wanted to. In order to apply taxes, you must have a vendor sales tax table set up in the system. And as you can see here, you have your total amount in the subtotal field minus any taxes. Once you finish editing the bill, it's time to post the bill. Posting a bill places this transaction into the accounts payable account until you pay it. You don't have to post the bill right away. You can post it later if you prefer. Simply select from the menu bar, business, then vendor, and find bill to bring up the bill. To post a bill right away after entering it in the system instead of waiting later to post it, select post from the toolbar and you will get a dialog box asking if you want to save it now since you have not previously saved it. Select yes and the post bill window will appear. Post date specifies the date for the transaction entered into the accounts payable account. Due date is the date the payment for the bill is expected. If you specify payment terms when you created the bill, the date is calculated according to the selected terms. If you did not specify payment terms, you can enter the expected payment due date here. Description, if you enter a description, it is entered into the memo field of the transaction. Post to account is the accounts payable account to post this transaction to. If you have more than one accounts payable account, you can select the account from a list of existing accounts payable accounts. Otherwise, the default accounts payable account as shown here should be selected. Accumulate splits. The default selection here will show more than one transaction as a single instead of a split transaction. You will find more detailed information about cumulative splits in my tutorial on creating invoices. When you have finished editing, select OK. And close out the window. 
Now, if you look at the accounts payable account, you should be able to see the amount you owe listed in the accounts payable account under liabilities. In my case, a hundred and thirty five dollars is listed. Step four. Process payments. When you are ready to process the bill payments in the system, select from the menu bar business. When the menu bar opens, select vendor. And from the sub menu, select process payment. In the process payment window, enter the name of the vendor in the name field. Just like we did before when searching for the vendor, you can start by typing in the name field a few letters of the name and GNU Cash will try to auto complete it for you. Like I mentioned before, this normally works. If not, click on the select tab to bring up the find tool you can use to search for and select the vendor. Post to is the accounts payable account to post this transaction to. Under documents, the open bill should appear here. To select the bill, click on it to highlight it. Then scroll down to the date field. Date is the date you wish to make the payment. Normally, this is the current date. You can change it by clicking on the drop down arrow to bring up the calendar you can use to change the date. Payment is the amount of money to transfer for this payment. You may want to partially pay a bill, and in that case, simply adjust the amount to what you want to pay. Num or number, here you can enter the check number associated with this payment. In the memo field, you can record any comments you would like to enter about this payment. On the right hand side, the transfer account is the account the money will be coming from to pay the bills, such as your business checking account. Here I will select checking account. Once you are finished, click on OK to close out of the dialog box and finish up. Now, if I look back at the chart of accounts, I can see that the $135 I posted in liabilities is no longer there because the liability has been paid and the money in the checking account has been reduced by the $135. See you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe.